This particular setup. Um, it, it just went up, right? Yeah, this one's kind of fluctuating. It, <laughs> it's probably at um, about 100 CFMs there. So this was the same circuit that John was just using. Um, we're using in, in the, the uh, window motor? Window motor. Now what I've added here is just a very, very basic uh, capacitor pulser, which I'm just using a, you know, a capacitor and an SCR and a little diode. And that's converting the negative energy output of the circuit into more of a positive energy. Um, and this gives me the capability of rotating these batteries around. As, just, as we just went over, if you're going to mix the energies, um, it, gets, uh, it, it gets difficult. It de it's difficult to run the SSG off of negatively charged batteries, and that's a whole uh, thing to explain. But So this is just a cat pulser, a basic cat pulser. A cat, fact, cat pulser? Capacitor pulser is what we call it. Okay. Cat pulser. And when I actually added this to this particular fan, the amp draw went... The what? Uh, the uh, amper draw um, from the from the primary battery went from 550 milliamps at 12 volts to 450 or 475 milliamps just by adding that little capacitor and SCR. Now, what I have here is a larger setup. I don't know, is that too close here? Which I made a little case for. This one's in the process of being constructed. Um, the idea, this is a six inch fan, another brushless motor. Exactly the same kind of motor inside. There's four little coils. And um, you can see on this one, the coils on the other side. Um, this is just a larger one. This is a little kit that, that I put together for people to test out. So and, and what are they testing out? Well, yeah. they're just being able to see that, you know, with a fan, now they can charge a battery instead of just wasting that energy. And the idea with, with these setups is you can rotate the batteries back and forth and keep the fan going so long as you, you know, rotate the batteries back and forth. And so long as you're using a positive energy. Positive energy with the capacitor. Energy. Yeah. So I've got on this one, you know, some switches, double pull, double throw switches to rotate the batteries. You know, we've got four wires here to change them, one from being the primary charging or powering battery to the other one um, being the charging battery, and then flip them back and forth. And depending on the battery size uh, that you're using, you know, these, these are very small batteries, so they're not going to last, you know, the primary battery is going to drain pretty fast. Um, so you'd have to rotate it back, you know, every so many hours. But I've had, you know, I've got the same circuit, a little bit bigger on a ceiling fan that I ran for several months um, last summer, <coughs> where I just, you know, rotated it back and forth between the two batteries. So the, the energy from one battery will go down, and then uh, the other one will be charging up. And then, you know, when it goes down low enough, you just flip the switch, and it'll just keep on going. Now, one of the things that um, I don't know if John's mentioned um, today, but you want to give the battery some rest. So in this system, it would be better to actually stop the system for a little bit, give it some rest, and then flip it, and rotate it, and then, or maybe have another battery bank. So, here's another thing that's very interesting. I'm going to put a little bit of, you know, load on this. And of course, if you look at the voltmeters, you find that. The, the primary battery that's powering the system will draw less. The primary battery being which 
That one. Okay. Right. You, you load it up and it and see, takes uh, less power. Now, on a conventional motor, it would be the opposite, where it would take more energy, um, it being under a, a more a greater load. So, so you can see it going down, but yet, and look at the charging battery, uh, which is right here, and it will actually charge a little bit better. Now, there is a, a, a sort of a mechanical sweet spot that I've found with this particular um, brushless motor conversion, and that is almost to the point of stopping it. And that's just, you know, that's just an interesting thing to, uh, to look at and experiment. So you've released the load now. And see that the rate of charge is, is slowed down a little bit. And it takes a little bit more to power. It just system. went into resonance now. Yeah, you can hear it. If I had an amp meter, um, which I do in the other room, to watch that, it would, it would shift. You would see the amps go, um, you know, just, it goes through about two or three shifts. Right, we saw that on the previous filming with John. You yeah. could see that. Yeah, with that larger motor over there. Yeah. Um, so, so we have, uh, you know, you can do this with any brushless motor. And so what I like to do on this one is I put a little reflective tape here, and I use a tachometer to measure the RPM. And what I've done um, is have, have one that's unmodified and just run it, you know, at the 12 volts, or this one's a 24 volt system. And, you know, monitor the RPMs for the given amount of energy that it takes to run the fan. And then compare that to this fan that has been converted. And try and match at least the RPM uh, for the power ratio. But then, at the same time, charge another battery. Or several batteries, which I've been able to do. Now, uh, one, one thing to note about this, just like in the regular monopole motor, is that the wire inside um, gives you different kinds of results. This one is the exact identical fan that I got at Radio Shack. And this one is a thinner gauge wire. And it is actually more efficient than this one. But this one only gives me a certain amount of power. So that, you know, if you want to have a really efficient system, you know, you can go with a smaller gauge wire to a certain extent. Um, but if you want to have <laughs> more airflow here um, with this size of a fan, then you're going to have to go with some higher gauge wire. So we were just doing some experiments trying to match it um, in the way that I was talking about it, trying to get the RPM exactly the same as the unmodified motor for the same amount of wattage, which is 3.84 in this particular fan. So it just takes a little bit of time to figure out which gauge wire will work to do that kind of thing. And there is a, if you, if you want more power um, on these fans, you can sacrifice some of the charging. That's what I've found. So I, I tend to be a guy, I used to be on a mechanic, I like torque, I like power. So I tend to push them pretty hard but it's not always the best kind of charging, unless I load it down like this. You know, and then you can see it's starting to go up. So we, we have several of these as um, kits. I've got a 10-inch fan that's a little larger than the 6-inch fan. And it, it all does the same thing. Um, and so, so you sell these for experimenters to... Uh... Yeah, what happened was we have a little kit that is just the basic monopole, as we just saw in the film, where, you know, there's a coil and a basic circuit and instructions on how to put it together. 
But people were complaining, well, I don't want to make a big wheel and I don't have the... So we, we thought about putting together a little kit that had all the parts in it, you know, and it was, you know, professionally machined. And it gave a direct comparison to the motor, so you knew exactly the difference. Because people were saying, well, there's no real mechanical power in this. Oh, I mean, it's not really meant as the motor. It's more as a mechanical oscillator as in the patent. But, uh, but there still was that, as John said, 23% uh, mechanical power there, which, you know, needs to be appreciated. So I've run, I've made about 140 different um, monopole uh, SSG schoolgirl setups over the last three years and just experimented with different kinds of arrangements. Um, and so this is just one of the latest ones that we've done. And then run this one. Right? Yeah, yeah, I was going to do that. The battery guy understood. Yeah, he... The one battery guy understood. Kevin, yeah. That you just can't charge batteries that way. So whatever's here is totally different. Right. And, and the thing that, 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 that we're actually trying to get across to... We're trying to make this as simple as possible for people. It yeah. has to be as simple as possible for people because they really don't understand what the energy is. And they're not willing to take the time to go and research for years and years and years to figure out, well, hey, you know, what, what these guys are terming free energy is the mechanical energy. Is the mechanical energy they're getting for free. Uh, they've never had anything that they could run as a toy, and you can consider this a toy. They've never had anything that you could take and get this mechanical energy out of it or wind to cool yourself off. And it would be very easy to drip water by this and you have an air conditioning unit that recharges its own batteries. Yeah. They're not willing to take the time to understand that. The future is about efficiency. Is about understanding what these forms of energy are. As we demonstrated earlier, that uh, negative energy is one thing and charges a battery totally different than what positive energy charges the battery. So, we have to understand the forms of energy and, and what everybody's terming as free energy is just a change in the energy. You know, Tesla wasn't going to do anything uh, mystical here. And I would imagine the government isn't going to want general information known either. They, they'd want to, pro you know, proprietize it in well, some way. Well, the, 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 the government has not indoctrinated the people into being efficient about anything. Mm -hmm. It's all politics. It's all what can we hide, what can we take away, how much can we control these people, how, what kind of a slave do you have to be to run this government? Yeah. It's very simple. You go to work, you give them 60% of your paycheck, even more. Because when you go to the store for food, you're paying taxes on the food, you're paying taxes here, you're paying taxes there. Pretty soon, you know what's your left? You're left with about 2% of your income. You start raising the fuel costs. And you create a debtor nation. You create a society of slaves. They don't have anything. They're not going to do very good work. They haven't figured that out yet. <laughs> okay, you're going to get half-assed work, and that's just plain and simple. That's what you're going to get. You're not going to get anybody that's worth a crap. And the reason that there is not an efficient motor out there that draws its energy from the ambient surrounding is because you have people that are feckless. Right. Okay, we've sort of broken broken through and we've touched the first and second base of this operation. Tony spent a good deal of time filming people that supposedly mysteriously make this witchcraft work.
See, to a normal engineer, this is witchcraft. Mm -hmm. This is something he wouldn't do. It's not in his.